Welcome to the Spiritually Embodied Leader Podcast. I'm Cynthia Gutierrez, a mom, dancer, dark side trans freak, and the creator of Embodied Ritual. I love to help conscious moms, healers, and highly sensitive people like you regulate your nervous system so you can embody your true essence, align with your higher calling, and finally become the parent you've always dreamed of being. Inside this podcast, we're going to be shining light on the topics of embodiment, subconscious mind, ritual and ceremony, cyclical living, and returning to nature so that you can enjoy life with the fullness of who you are. Thank you so much for being here. Now, let's get into it. Hey, what is up? Happy winter solstice. Happy podcast official launch day. Woo-woo! Lots of things to celebrate. Also, the day before my birthday, (laughs) I'll be 33 on December 22nd. And yes, it's very, very exciting. So thank you so much for tuning in. It's always lovely to share this time and space. Um, And yeah, I am just basking in the silence and the stillness of my home before my partner and my daughter come back home. They've been out on vacation, visiting family on his side of the family. I was too ill to go with them, but yeah, now that I'm healed up, my voice is pretty much back to normal, almost. I was doing a, like a frame drum class there. I sing songs while I play the frame drum and there's some of the high notes where my, my voice still cracks and I'm like, oh, okay. It's not like fully healed, but it's getting there, man. The flu that came through this season. Wow. That was strong. So I hope if you have been recovering from that, I hope you have a graceful um, recovery and have a beautiful time with the family if you are all gathering together for whatever reason, for whatever celebration. And um, yeah, so just in case you have not signed up yet for the Winter Solstice Embodied Ceremony podcast launch party that's happening today at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, you may still have time to sign up for it, okay? The link is in the show notes, so if you want, you can pause this real quick, click on the link in the show notes, and get yourself registered so that you get the link proper, Um, and you will also get the replay. Now, if you did miss it and you still want to celebrate, maybe you're listening to this episode later in the winter solstice day, or even if it's next day, you know, sometimes like I just, I just continue to celebrate things as I feel called. So anyway, if it's the day after solstice or whatever, then you can also pop on to my YouTube channel and watch the replay there. Okay. I just, these high holidays have honestly changed my life and I'll be sharing more, a little bit more in this episode and definitely more in the next episode, episode three, with how winter solstice came into my life and how it changed it. And ever since I started practicing celebrating these high holidays, like the solstices and the equinoxes and all of that, and just being mindful of living cyclically, I feel like I'm just so much more in touch with myself and with nature and yeah, just the vibe of the season that is that is amongst us. So yeah, if you want to celebrate, we're going to be doing um, an embodied ceremony, as I like to call it, to give thanks for 2022 and to clear the slate. Yeah, so important to reset, refresh that energetic slate so that when we start planting seeds intentionally for the year ahead and the new cycle ahead, it's like this open, fertile garden bed that is just ripe and ready to plant the seeds so that they can begin sprouting and growing and coming up to the light that will um, soon come in the springtime. So yes, this episode is dedicated to the winter solstice and I just wanted to shine a whole lot more light on it. Um, And yeah, because this is such a beautiful way to get back in touch with our ancestral wisdom and practices so that we can be more connected with nature, right? With ourselves and also with these beautiful indigenous knowings that we all um, have within ourselves. It's in our bones, right? To honor the earth and the seasons and the cycles because our ancestors in the past, they all lived very much closely in sync with the wheel of time, as I say it, with the seasons, right? Because a lot of them grew their own food 
And so every season has its own energetic signature. There's different things that happen. Um, plants grow certain ways at certain times of the year. So in order for them to survive, right, and be able to sustain themselves as a civilization, they paid very close attention to um, the wheel of time. And so there are some lessons and medicines of the rhythms of life that we can attune to because there is a cycle in everything, okay? Everything. This is also a universal law in the Kabbalion of the Hermetic Principles, right? It's one of the seven Hermetic Principles called the Law of Rhythm. And so I feel like the more that we become aware of and better understand these cycles and the rhythms of life, you start to see how it relates to different areas of your life, whether it's a creative project, whether it's in your relationships, whether it's with your own self um, or the environment around you. It's like we can start to better grasp, oh, okay, this is where this is at, right? And there's that beautiful moment of acceptance and how can we best enjoy it? How can we tend to it? How can we reap the benefits? So, this is also something that's helped me be able to let go of the societal conditioning that has programmed us to constantly be doing things, right? It's like the way that society has, well, our modern day society, as I'll say, um, and the patriarchy and all of this has been set up is to constantly be doing, 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 regardless of the season, regardless of what phase you are in in your family or relationships, or even for a woman, um, a female that's on their menstrual cycle. Like this patriarchal society um, is very much built up on a 24 hour cycle, right? You just you do the same thing in and out and yeah, there are some holidays, right, that are um, weaved into our calendar as we know it today. Yet there's something about nature that has a lot of beauty and medicine and wisdom to share with us that we can take into our everyday lives. And so this can be a really beautiful way to start to decondition yourself and break down the barriers or the constraints or the restrictions of like, oh my God, I have to constantly be doing something. And if I'm not, or if I'm in the phase of rest, then it's seen as less than, then I'm not enough, then I'm doing something wrong, right? And that's not it at all. Um, and so I just really wanna start diving into that so that we can start to take off those shackles from ourselves and release the judgment and you know, putting ourselves down for taking a natural step of the cycle that is so crucial and so necessary. So yes, um, in this episode, I really want to explain the concept of a cycle and where it shows up in our lives and shine light on the differences between the lunar cycle and the solar cycle and how they affect us, as well as going into the energetics of the winter season so that you can better sync up with it and its energy so you can really enjoy the benefits, right, that it has to provide. And also, you know, it's a beautiful way to get to know yourself better. It helped me better understand myself when I realized, oh, I'm kind of always toggling between the spring and the summer seasons of like initiating, starting and trying to go, go, go. And then once I feel like I have to slow down or, um, I can't continue on then it's like, oh my God, I'm there's, you know, it's doomsday, right? And it's like, no, it's actually just a natural part of the process. And, and I was able to take a better look at like, well, why am I, you know, having such a hard time? Why am I putting myself down? Why am I judging myself and other people? Even I started noticing the way that if my partner is, um, relaxing on the couch for like, you know, like a day, let's say, and because he's been going, 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 and he's like, and he just naturally allows himself to rest on the couch for a day and just take it easy. Um, also, keeping in mind other things like the human design and this and that astrology, right? Um, and various things. Um, he is, I'm still trying to remember, sometimes I forget if either a projector or a reflector. Um, and I'm a generator, right? And apparently the world is built around generators. <laughs> so it's no surprise that, you know, the way that our society and the world around, uh, uh, some of the world around us is built is 
constantly in that like we're always on that hamster wheel right um, and for some of us that can fuel us or we have this like energy um, energetic field or this battery pack as some call it according to human design that's just like always regenerating itself now it doesn't always do that because we are human beings and that's the thing because we are human beings and we are earthlings we are closely in contact and sync with the earthly cycles the lunar cycles the solar cycles so we're going to be diving into that today and um, even if you don't know human design or your astrological you know um, natal chart and blah 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 like even just the simplicity of knowing these this cyclical phase and the four phases that make up this particular phase that I'm talking about you can already just learn more about yourself and the people around you and the environment and how to go about your life with more intention and more compassion and better understanding right so yeah we can totally begin by looking at nature and the seasons of the earth that have a particular cycle right let's say it starts from the spring right since 2023 i mean it's still winter season but it's like it starts to pick up towards the spring right um and especially that gateway between winter solstice and fall or excuse me spring equinox so there's the spring and then there's the summer there's the fall and then the winter and that makes up the entire cycle right it's a four-phased cycle now keep in mind other cycles exist too that are not uh, four parts, right? There's that this like a three part cycle that's like the maiden mother crone, right? Um, or there's even like the hero's journey that has many phases. Um, so not every cycle is made up of four parts, but the one that I wanna talk to um, you about today is the one that is related to the earth and us as human beings in, in that way. So these phases also show up in the lunar cycle now with this four-part cycle it is also equivalent to um, other things like the lunar cycle the solar cycle the menstrual cycle hormonal cycle a life cycle and what I would call creation cycle and so in relation to the lunar cycle there's the moon phases right there's the new moon or I guess related to spring would be first quarter summer is full moon um, fall is last quarter and then the winter is the new moon and in relation to the solar cycle now even though the sun runs on a 24-hour cycle there's also the springtime in relation to the rising sun there's the summer of high uh, high noon right and then there's the fall uh, related to the setting sun and then there's the nighttime, which is the new moon, which is winter also. So I'm, I'm probably going to be interchangeably going, <laughs> talking about all these different um, cycles that it relates to. But anyway, yeah, so we have those four phases of the day as well. Even though it's a solar cycle runs on a 24 hour basis, we can still um, sync up this four parts, four phased cycle there. Um, and then there's also the menstrual cycle, okay? So um, a, a female body goes through the cycle of, what is that, the follicular phase, right? And then there's the ovulation phase, which is most fertile and highly um, able to get pregnant, which, so the, the follicular phase is the spring, then the ovulation phase is the summer, and then the luteal phase, um, when the lining of the the uterus starts to release itself and shed right that is the fall phase and then there's the bleed right the the active menstrual cycle that is the winter phase okay and in keeping in mind the solar cycle the 24-hour cycle and the menstrual cycle that's also related to the lunar cycle it they're all in sync right um, there's also the hormonal cycle. So um, a man runs through these hormones 24 hours a day. Okay, they run through all the same hormones every single day, like the phases of the, the, the hormonal cycle. Now, the female bodies <clears throat> run through a hormonal cycle that's on a about a 28-day cycle. That's in relation to the moon, right? So that's why the menstrual cycle is, you know, 
equivalent to the moon cycle and then the men's hormonal cycle is equivalent to the solar cycle because it runs on 24 hours and the women runs on a 28 day cycle like the moon does. Um, and that's give or take, right? Some, some people have 28 day or 26 or some go longer, you know, and for various reasons. But anyway, that's the gist of it. And then we have the life cycle, right? We got um, childhood and then we have like early adulthood, you know, like childhood, adolescence, and then there's like early adulthood, adulthood, and then there's elderhood, right? And then there's death, which also death, this winter phase is beautiful because it's the end of something and also the beginning of something else. So there's that liminal shift of like what it was and now it's not quite, it's not what it was, but it's not fully what it's going to be um, quite yet. So this death and rebirth process within that winter phase. And then we have this, the creation cycle or even just a simple cycle. Let's say like um, lighting a candle. There's lighting the lighter, right? Like l putting the fire to the wick that's lighting the candle. And then you're done lighting it and it's lit. There's the lit candle. So that's the second phase. And then there's the blowing out of the candle, right? And that little ember that goes out. And then it's, not lit, right? It's an unlit candle. So there's four phases right there, like or turning on a light switch. There's turning it on, it being on, turning off, and then it's off, right? And so there's you can apply this also to creative cycles when let's say you're making a piece of art or for me was, you know, choreographing a dance. There's the idea like, oh, like I have this idea and you know, creation is starting to stir and then you start making the dance piece, you're creating it and then there's the performance, it's done and then it's, and then it's finished, yeah? And then there's, there's no more piece and it's already complete. And that's that, right? With every art piece or creative cycle. And so within each of these phases, there are specific occurrences that happen. Yeah, so they all have like this certain things that happen within each phase. And so when we look at the wheel of the year, as I like to call it, um, these ancient practices that honored the wheel of the year and the different seasons and what happens during those seasons were respected by major civilizations. Um, and that even like built monumental architecture to celebrate these specific, you know, solstices and equinoxes, right? Like the one that comes to mind every time is the, the Mayan pyramid where I'm trying to remember if it's a solstice or equinox. It might have been summer solstice. Uh, I'd have to look it up. <laughs> Usually I like know that stuff off the top of my head, but anyway. Um, there's a particular time of the year where the sun rises at a very specific spot, right? And when it's rising, because of the way that the Mayan pyramid was built, there is a snake that they had carved into the stone, right? Or however they made it. And when the sun rises, the shadow of the snake looks like, it's very precise in the way that it is um, casted onto the pyramid. It looks like the snake is starting to slither its way down the pyramid and it only happens on that very specific day. And so it's, and, and there's so many others that are like this too. And so it just shows the importance and the energetic vortex that these equinoxes and solstices have for us to tap into. And so each phase holds an energetic signature. And as far as the winter solstice goes, the winter solstice and the energetic signature that the winter solstice has for us to relish and to cherish, yeah, um, we can see the energetic signature out in nature in the way that it rests, right? There's no fruit, there's no leaves, the, the nature um, can be very bare, right? And uh, animals also hibernate. And in some parts of the world, it snows, right? And I always think back to like English literature and learning about the symbols of things and that snow always resembled death. It symbolizes death. Um, and so I also associate elderhood here as well. And so I always think that it's the time where um, it's so cold and dark 
that it's a time for us to come together and go inward, right? And to like heed the wisdom of our elders. And I always, it what comes to mind are like those slow moving animals, right? Like the elk and the buffalo. Um, and tying this back to, you know, all the other cycles that I had mentioned, this is equivalent to the nighttime, right? When we're sleeping and there's no sun because we're, we're sleeping and we're covering our body, right? It heals the most, it heals the fastest when it sleeps. And it's also the time we dream. And in um, tying it back to the menstrual cycle, this is the bleed. This is the time for the female body to rest as much as she wishes, as much as she's called to, which is probably the most that she is called to throughout her entire cycle. It's a time for restoration. And it's also a time when she's, um, they're highly intuitive. Yeah. And it just, it makes so much sense because this is also tied in with the new moon phase, right? That dark moon. So like, let's say we were going out hiking in a dark mood, we can't see anything at night. There, there is no lunar light to show the way. And so it's, it's like a time where we pull over and we stop and we go inward, right? And reflect on maybe how has the journey been and how do we wish to continue on? For the remaining of the journey right or the new journey or whatever it is um and so this is a really beautiful time in in terms of the new moon it's a blank slate that is ripe for new intentions yeah i always think of that blank fertile fertile soil bed that is ready to have seeds be planted into it for the next cycle ahead and so, yeah, this is the, the equivalent to the, a simpler process of not doing, yeah, to be off, right? When we were talking about the light switch, it's the time when the light isn't even on, it's off. When the candle is, it's just a wick. Um, and also a time to be alone, right? And I always, I always think about Shavasana too. If you've um, practiced yoga before, you do the whole sequence, right? The warm up and then the, the like, um, kind of the meat and potatoes of like the, the sequence. And then there's the cool down and then there's the Shavasana, there's the rest, there's the letting go, which is also a time to integrate what had just happened. It's a time for your body to digest and allow it to settle within yourself. And so this is for us in the Northern Hemisphere, this is the longest night of the year. Winter solstice is the longest night of the year, shortest day of the year. And so being able to be with the darkness and trusting that the light will return, right? Having that trust, having that faith that the light is going to return. Beginning tomorrow, the nights are going to start to get shorter and shorter and shorter, yeah? So even though the nights have been getting longer and this is now the longest night of the year for us in the, nor in the Northern Hemisphere, it is a time to also go inward and access the light within ourselves, yeah? And there was this beautiful quote from uh, my former teacher, Athena Paracas of Sage Goddess. I always love reading her blog and just, you know, I just, I, I love her wisdom and the way that she writes. And I read this from her blog that if someone is always there to save you, then you never learn to save yourself. And this is a really beautiful time in the winter season to really come back home to yourself and to let go of you know, all the people and the places and the things and everything that we've been so externally involved with. And we can let go, slow down, go inward and ask yourself, like, what, was, what is it do I want? What do I need? You know, where is that light within myself? Where is my passion? Where is my creativity? Where, like, coming inward is so important to remembering who you really are, right? And so when we have those transitional periods of ending and letting go and releasing and going inward, being with yourself, it's also a time to be able to prepare yourself to begin anew. Yeah. And that's why this is so important. And even my, my shaman Makosi of the Royal Shaman, if you don't follow her, especially if you're an entrepreneur, um, follow her. She is amazing. Um, and she's helped me realize how even though our society puts the summertime, right? The constant doing and like being out there and like peak energy, right? Even though that's been put on a pedestal as an illusion, the 
rest and the restoration and going inward and being still and silent in the nothingness is just as important. It's so vital, right? Like if you think about it, when if you find yourself going, 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 you're starting to burn out, maybe you're getting headaches, maybe you're like starting to like make mistakes or slipping up in some way, or you're just like, I can't, I, I'm starting to slow down, like I, I need to stop. And if you don't really allow yourself to rest, right? Like sometimes I have to really be mindful of the times where I'm going to lay down and I'm still scrolling social media or like looking at my email or something. It's like, no, put the phone down, put it in the other room if I have to, right? And I even go as to like, if I'm in my room, I close all the doors. I close like the sliding door. Like I just try to barricade my energy so much so that it's just, it's like, putting myself back into the womb of just resting and healing essentially. And so if you don't allow yourself to do that, when you get back up, it's like, oh my God, it wasn't enough. Oh my God, how am I going to keep going? Right. And even though not every time that you rest may, you know, fulfill your cup all the way, it's such an important practice to begin to value it, you know, value that time and say, hey, this is just as important. This is the an integrative process that is so needed and crucial um, because maybe you've experienced the opposite where you did allow yourself to rest. You, maybe you went on, out to a spa or something just to like, you know what, I am just here to heal myself, to restore myself. And that's the intention, right? Um, and when you take that time, when you come back out, you're like, oh, I'm so much more refreshed. And now you have the resources, you're resourced to be able to continue on and give back after giving yourself what it is that you needed. Now, the magic of this time that I really like to work with is this, the, the energetic vortex that it has to help initiate your vision. Yeah. Because this winter solstice, this winter season, is the perfect time to reflect back on the cycle that is now ending, 2022, right? It's really important to take the time, not only just to rest and be like, okay, I'm slowing down, but also if you're going to be resting and you have the, the means and the capacity to, reflect back on how things have been, what worked, what didn't work. Right. And these are like, OK, so these things I really want to share this with you as like journal prompts. If you want to, you know, um, maybe you're just not really called to the embodied ceremony um, or you haven't really taken the time and energy to kind of tend to the, the completion of 2022 and you want to like have a better start for the new year, the new cycle ahead, then these are some journal prompts that you can work with. So a handful of questions that you can journal on is reflecting on what worked. Yeah. And why did it work? What was it that just felt good? Right. And you're like, yeah, like I'm happy with that. I'm content with that. Like, what was it that worked? And then on the flip side, why didn't it work? Yeah. What didn't work out in the year? And why is that? What happened? What contributed to that? Like what fell through? What, what was it? Or maybe something did happen, but it wasn't in the way that you wanted it to. And it's just like, uh, like that's not kind of, that's, that wasn't really what I was going for, but you know, that's just what happened. Um, jot that down. And then also what lessons did you learn from it? From both what worked, what did you learn from that? And then what didn't work? What did you learn from that? It's so important to really start to gather, to harvest these lessons that we get to experience because, I mean, I'm sure you probably can relate to particular patterns that show up in our lives, whether it's in relationships or like showing up into a certain project or patterns that I see in my parenthood, right? And the ways that I relate with my daughter um, and various things like, what did, when am I learning from this? Because if it's a pattern and especially if we don't like the pattern and we want the pattern to change, if we don't start to highlight and take stock, notice what it is about the patterns that keep showing up that we can look at it differently or take the lesson that it's actually teaching us and then be able to apply it later in life, then the pattern's going to keep repeating itself, right? It's like, 
doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result and being surprised and shocked or upset like, oh, there it goes again, it happened again. It's like, okay, but did you learn the lesson? Because obviously, it's a very, very common thing for the universe to be like, oh, you didn't quite get it. You're not really getting it. So here it is again. Maybe you'll get it this time. Yeah, and so if you want a different year, a, a, a new experience in 2023, then this is the time to take a moment to slow down, stop, reflect on what worked, what didn't work, what did you learn? And how can you apply the lessons in the year ahead? Yeah. And honestly, even like if we don't know how, right? Because we don't, we don't really know what's going to happen. But at least you have those tangible, those specific written out lessons that's like, oh, okay, I have a better idea now why this is showing up in my life. And so when the time comes, because as patterns, they, it will come up again, you then have that ability to apply the lesson and do things differently than you were doing them before. Yeah. Now to shift your attention to kind of the, the, the future vision, you can really start to journal about how you wish for the new cycle to be. What are you calling in? What do you wish to experience? Yeah. How do you wish to be in the new cycle ahead? And what can support you in embodying that vision? What is it that you need or just stuff for yourself, right? To you, from you. What do you need to help yourself embody that vision? And then of course, what does your higher self want you to know? Whether it had to do in your reflection process or in this preparation process. All the above or anything, right? I kind of leave, always like to leave an open-ended question for, the, for my higher self to be like, what do you want me to know in this moment about all of this? Like, what do you wish for me to know? And I just take a moment to allow my hand to just go. And so those are some journal prompts that you can do to really allow yourself to reflect and prepare yourself for the new cycle ahead and also get clear as to what it is that you want. Yeah, this is like equivalent to a new moon, but just, you know, on a grander scale, as I like to see it. Um, and so when you get clear as to like what it is that you want and what you're calling into your life, this is a powerful portal for ceremonial work and ritual work. Yeah, because it's just only going to magnetize your intentions. So clear the energetic slate of 2022 and then set the frequency and activate your manifestations for the cycle ahead. Yeah, and there's so many ways that you can do this, right? Like you probably have your own practices or if you don't and you want some help with this, this is why I'm hosting the Embodied Ceremony. If you missed the, the live session, then go on YouTube, check it out, celebrate, you know, it's, it's such a beautiful time to magnetize your intentions and really start to help be the catalyst to your manifestations and your vision. So yeah, it's these holidays that have helped really changed my life for the best. And I think, I just feel like it's a really effective way to be able to take kind of like timestamps of things that are happening in your life, right? And allowing like creative processes and the, the cyclical phases and all of this to run its course in the way that it is meant to. Um, and I just feel like it really was this catalyst to something that just changed my life for the best. It really was. Um, at the time in December 21st, 2012, that winter solstice of 2012, I actually went on a trip to Egypt. You remember when the Mayan calendar was ending and like it was like all this talk of the apocalypse and all this stuff, right? It was actually the ending of an era and the beginning of a new era. And at the time I didn't know that. Because it was like, oh, December 22nd's my birthday and they're doing a festival on the 21st, like birthday trip, right? I'm going to dive into the whole story because it's really epic um, in the next episode. But when I went to Egypt to celebrate this, this whole thing, I didn't know about winter solstice. And so when I was immersed into that ceremony and that celebration and the festival, Ever since then, I started paying attention to 
these cyclical phases. And it's like, it's helping me really be able to reflect back on and see like, oh, wow, the, my progress, the lessons, like my evolutionary phase, everything. And I just feel like the winter solstice was a catalyst to my spiritual awakening and it's just changed my life. So yeah, it's, I have a, such a deep love for it. And of course, my birthday is the next day. So it's always such an interesting time of the year, so much to celebrate. And even though it's a time of rest for me, like it just, wow, I get so lit up at this time of year. <laughs> so anyway, yes, if you'd love to celebrate and join me in the Embodied Ceremony podcast launch party, then please join me, it's free. And um, it's gonna be a grand old time. We're gonna be doing some embodied practices to really start to reflect and hone in the lessons and get clear as to what it is that we want for the new year and to celebrate, yeah? Um, there's also a giveaway opportunity. Now, depending on when this is released and when you you know listen in and all of this, you, that chance may have already passed, but I'm just letting you know because you'll get the details right as soon as you register for the embodied ceremonies. So if you have any questions that you'd love to ask me or have me cover in the podcast, please send me a DM so that we can connect. Um, I'm always open to questions and suggestions of topics that I can cover in the podcast. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it and happy winter solstice. May you have a beautiful day. Okay, ciao. Thank you so much for tuning in. May this show continue to awaken the spiritually embodied leader within you. If you enjoyed this episode and you want others to enjoy it too, then take a screenshot, share it on your stories, and tag me at Embodied Ritual. Now, if you'd really like to support me in helping more people, please rate this show and leave a review on iTunes. Thanks again. Let's connect soon.